guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel, Brosnan and Fenella. I'm here with my sister. Hi. And from our last video that you watched, you would have heard us say that I'm going to tell you guys a story time of how I became a boxer. So this is going to be our first story time on our channel and I'm really excited to share the story with you guys. This is about the time that I went to Cameroon with my sister and my mum. So let's get straight into it. So, <laughs> I feel like we should just start from the very beginning, so like when we, when we started our journey. Yeah, so like when we was leaving to go to the airport and everything. Um, so, to start things off, we had to wake up at like... I remember, but we got up early. We got up at like five. And of course, we um, stayed up all night. And we had to wake up at like five o'clock because our flight was at 10 o'clock and we were catching our flight from Gatwick. We had to wake up early and get there early. And my mum had already booked a cab in advance. But the way she explained it, it was like, the way she said it, like she told me that she told them, oh, three people are traveling. Like she didn't say how many suitcases we have. She just said three people are traveling. So obviously to them, they're gonna just think, oh, three it's three suitcases, suitcases exactly. Yeah when in actual fact we had hand yeah. luggage yeah. we had hand luggage each so three hand luggages and then we all had two big suitcases each so in total that's nine suitcases and when we got downstairs what car did we see a five seater <laughs> so we was we were standing there like bro how's all this gonna, gonna fit, fit in there it. then the, the the cab guy was like you said for three people only <laughs> But it was me, it was me, you, mum, and our stepdad. Mm -hmm. She said three people traveling. I don't get why she said that. Like, but that way. one, it was her fault, I'm not gonna lie. And then um, the guy was like, oh, I can try and find you the van, but I don't know if anyone's available. So I was like, bro, I was we getting, were getting stressed. Was like, like, oh, all we wanted to do was get to Gatwick and catch our flight. That's all we wanted to do. But straight away, first thing in the morning, guys, it's like 6 a.m. in the morning, we're already and I'm having not a morning hassle. Person, like, so and I'm the fact that peace. we didn't even sleep as well, so we're already just getting annoyed and we just want to get to Gatwick. So we had to wait, like, was it about 30 minutes? Yeah. For the next and it was, car. But it was cold. It was, but we had to wait outside, and guys, this was December. We traveled on the 15th of December. You know, you know when it's so cold that your teeth start shattering? That's what it was. Like, we was getting so annoyed. Because we, first of all, we were cold. Second of all, we were just annoyed that the wrong car came. And third of all, we didn't want to miss the flight. Mm -hmm. That was like the main thing. Then the car finally came. We all got into the car with the luggage fit and whatever. We get to the airport, everything was calm. And then um, the thing with Cameroon is there's no flight that goes from London straight to Cameroon. You have to take a journey where you have to stop in one place and then from that place you get a plane to Cameroon. So in our case we were flying with Turkish Airlines. I do not recommend that airline at do all. Do not. So because we were flying with Turkish Airlines we obviously had to stop in Turkey and then from Turkey we got a flight to um, Yaoundé and the plane that we got on it wasn't just stopping in Yawande, that wasn't the final stop. It stopped in Yawande, everyone that was going to Yawande got off and that's where we were getting off. Then after Yawande, it stopped in Douala. So it had two stops for that flight. And you know when you're doing like a transit flight, they tell you, okay, cool, when you're in Turkey, you don't need to go and pick up your luggage again, it will just go straight to Cameroon. That's what we were told. We get to Cameroon now, bear in mind we've been awake since like 5am, we've been travelling for literally the whole day. When we landed in Cameroon, it was about 11pm. We have to go in this long ass line. The thing about Cameroon is just so discombobbed. There's no organisation skills. They're it's rude so as well, they're rude. There's no organisation. When we came off the flight, 
they start handing out a form that you need to fill in for your name, why you came to Cameroon, how long you're staying, who you're staying with. And it's just like, it's just so long that you yeah. could have given us that form Honestly, on the flight yeah. because the flight was, I don't even know how many hours, I can't remember, but it was a long flight. But no, everyone had to stand up and the stand was like, you're rushing. I was really like, does anyone have a pen? Who has a pen? Who has a pen? There, yeah, there was no pens. There's no pens. They just give you the form no with pens. no pens. And the last time we went, the only reason why we didn't stay in that line is because we knew someone that works in the airport. In the airport. So if you know someone, you're patterned. If you don't, you got to wait in that long line. Wait. Already, I was just tired. And I was just getting annoyed and it was that we were taking that long. Like, it was so hot. And it was sticky hot in that <laughs> airport. No, con no yeah. aircon. It was, like, it was like London hot. Yeah. In the airport, the worst. Yeah. Then we finally get out of that line to go to the that thingy where the luggage moves around on. So we get there now, and I spot my hand luggage. She spots hers. My mum spots hers. So we all get the hand luggage. So now we gotta wait for the big luggages to come. The most important luggages. All our clothes, the bed sheets, everything. Hairs. Like everything that we needed was in our big luggage of course because that's what everyone does so we're waiting now and the thing didn't start moving yet so after a couple of minutes it starts moving so I, I clocked that there was this floral um suitcase it kept going around and around and around. from there i was i had a bad feeling i was like this luggage ain't here and me personally i just feel like if you go on holiday and you're waiting at the airport for about 30 minutes, your luggage is lost. Yeah. So I was like, okay, cool. Let me just see if this floral suitcase comes again. If it keeps coming, then on my life, the luggage is not here. It was 12 a.m., 1 a.m., <laughs> 2 a.m., still no luggage. So we had to go into another line. It wasn't, it wasn't even, even a line. line. It was a, Let's a just be honest. It wasn't it was even a, a line. Huddle. Literally, like like I said, it's just so discombobbed. There's no organisation skills. There's no line. There's just a big group of people, and it's like everyone's just pushing, 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 pushing to get to the front so they can fill in the form to claim their luggage. So, um, Fenella was with the luggage, and I was with my mum trying to get the form thing. That's why we was lining up. Then some dirty guy come. <laughs> And he starts pushing, and I was like, bro, you need to relax, because literally, I'm not the one, don't push me, because I'm already pissed, and it's, I'm, I'm tired and everything. So he's pushing, he's like, oh, I'm next, I'm next. I was like, no, you're not. Then um, this woman was like, to the guy, you're not next, you need to go, everyone was like, moving. I was like, no, bro, and I was pushing him, and I was, you know them ones that say you're the guy? I was like, this is to the guy in the line. No, <laughs> yeah. no. It was pissing me off. Like, I felt like to just grab his passport and dash it. So then he'll have to go there and we'll just get served. So we get served now and then um, we go home. Bruv, the, all our stuff was in that luggage. Oh, guys, not all even one pant. No toothbrush. toothbrush. No pyjamas. No clothes. I no I packed clothes in Luckily, my, yeah, you like packed free, football stuff. Yeah, football stuff. Like three um tops and then a couple what, shorts. Two two free shorts. Yeah. Like I'm that's it. Guys, I'm lucky that I can fit into her clothes because I was literally living in the clothes that I travelled in and her clothes. Guys, they so want and well. the thing is they said, Okay, cool, we're gonna call you when your luggage comes and then you can come to the airport and pick it up. Day one. No phone call. Day two. No phone call. Day three. Was that the phone call? No. No phone call. Day four. The phone we finally call. got the phone call. Three day four days. Four days. Look, but but don't think we were dirty because we did go to the market Yeah, we went to the shop stuff. and bought knickers and But it's just the cash loss, like, our stuff was all there, then we have to buy We have to stuff. rebuy everything. And even then, like, you buy stuff, but it's like, you just want your clothes. Yeah. I, I was so upset, like, the holiday just started looking so rubbish because I was so upset that we didn't even have our luggage. Even one boy, um, because they literally lost everyone's luggage. Some boy was there and he only had a backpack. That was it. So, like, all his stuff was in the thingy everything he had one backpack that was it so when we went to the airport to get our stuff now they were doing higgy haga they were like oh um so Fenella and my mum went to get the luggage and they were like oh you need to open it 
why they're like and you. guys can i just say something as me and my mom are leaving before before that even when we went to the desk to basically claim that we got our luggage back the man at the counter was basically saying okay cool now all you need to do is get your luggage enjoy your holiday and that's that when we're leaving, the person that's telling us to open your luggage, he's wearing normal clothes like this. He's wearing like traditional this. clothes, like normal guy. No badge. No badge. Nothing. No nothing. He's like, open your bag. And the thing is, as well, in Cameroon, once, I'm not even like, you know, but this is true. Once they see your light skin, they come onto you. Mm -hmm. They think you're rich. We're not rich. Just because we're from London and we're light skinned doesn't mean we're rich. They're, they're like, open your luggage, open your luggage. Why do we need to open your luggage? Everyone is getting their luggage and going. Why do it's we? It's only have to us that it? get stopped because they see he saw two young women and one was light skinned. So he's thinking, yeah, they need to open their luggage. But for what as well? When he's telling me, oh, you need to, you need to open your suitcase. I literally walked out with the trolley thing and my suitcases on there. I literally walked out and I left. Then as I'm looking back, my mum tries to do the same thing and he stands right in front of the trolley and is pushing the trolley onto my mum. So me, I'm very overprotective when it comes to my family, especially my mum and my little sister. So I go running back and I'm thinking, what are you doing? Are you doing? Don't push the trolley on my mum. Don't do that. Don't do that. And he's there saying, you need to open the suitcase, you need to open the suitcase. So my mum's like to him, the thing is, we can't even open the suitcase anyway because all our suitcases had padlocks on it and we left the key at our uncle's house because one, we haven't had our luggage for four days. So we were just so excited to get the luggage. We didn't think about bringing the key. Either Two, way, we didn't think we need to open the suitcase. Exactly. So why would we need to open the suitcase? It's already been through uh security baggage control yeah, or whatever, whatever it's called like it's been through it in london it went through it in turkey and it went through it again in cameroon so why does it need to happen again and when this guy saying oh you need to open your bag i was saying but like who are you mm, where's your like ID? where's your id like i don't even know who you are you could just be some random person telling me open my bag then he's like oh you're you're asking me if i work here you're asking me if you're i asking work me here who I you're asking me who, who I, am. I am then i was like yes i am because you're asking me to open my, my bag. So why would I open my bag for some random man? And some other person that works in the airport, he came and was like, oh, um, this man is the border control security. So I'm just like, ooh, I'm really scared, aren't I? I don't give a damn. You didn't show me no ID. I'm still not going to open the bag. So they're arguing and I see it. So I'm like, I, I, climbed, I went under the barriers and I was like, what's going on? Then I hear him saying, you need to open the bag. I'm like, for what? Move. So I get the trolley and I push, um, he pushes the trolley onto me. I'm like, D I'm like, don't push the trolley on me. Don't push it on me. So I swerve the trolley and I try to walk <laughs> out. I move it and I'm like, move bro, I'm going now. This is my luggage. So he comes running and he's um grabbing the, the trolley thing. And he's like, you need to open the bag. You need to open the bag. Then Fenella was like to the other guy, oh, do you do this to everyone or do you do it just because Where you're we're Europe. from Europe? He was like, what did he say? He, he was, was like, oh, something. he was like, oh, this, um, this has nothing to do with you having a um, British passport. And I was like- Did you um, answer my question? And the thing is, he was just waffling bears and I was just like, okay, but you didn't answer my question. Do you do this to every customer or is it because you see that we're British? Then he was just like, no, we don't do this to every customer. And so when this like, is all happening, them. we see the other people getting their just bags and going. going. No they're one not, they're not the bag. asking them. And then um, he's pushing the trolley now, so I'm like, cool, I don't care. I took the suitcases off the trolley and I was going to wheel them out. Then the guy comes and he, he starts running. He's like, what are you doing, blah, blah. He grabs the suitcase out of my hand, starts pushing me, starts grabbing my hand. So Fenella comes running and she's like, don't touch my sister. Don't touch my <laughs> sister. Because this guy was literally grabbing me like this. For no reason. Just because I was taking my suitcases, my property. So he's like, um, she's like, don't touch my sister. She pushed me back and then he grabbed her arm 
and I swear he was doing like that. Yeah. He was like, don't touch me. And then father, I was just standing there. Yeah. And then all I, <laughs> I was like, get off me, get off all me. All I see is, boom. <laughs> I, I, I was standing there like, we go to prison. And she punched him in the jaw. And I, li I, li bruv, I remember what I said. <laughs> I was standing there, I was like, we're getting arrested. <laughs> and my mum was like, oh, everyone was just like, I, I, can't, like, I didn't regret it one bit. It literally felt so good. Bro, and do you know what? To my defence, yeah, guys, he was doing Chinese burn to me. Yeah. Chinese then when I say get off me, get off me, get off me, and I was trying to like release my hand, he pushed me against the wall. Yeah. So when he pushed me against the wall, that's when I just went, and that's why they call me for another creed. Like we Not said you know. in the video you know. before, and that's why we're doing this story time so you guys can know why I have that nickname. Um, he start he grabbed my wrist again after I punched him, and you know, like obviously as an African man, he was just feeling embarrassed because you know a young woman punched him in the jaw of in front of all his colleagues, male and female. Like he starts saying, "Oh, um, I'm gonna beat you up outside of this airport. You see me and you, I will." beat you up outside this airport uh, everybody you need to lock the doors now take, take their passport like he was gonna arrest us there and then and mm -hmm. then send us back to London. he was like yeah we're gonna send you back to um, london his colleague was was like oh relax relax like you're doing the, he was like yeah you're, you're doing, doing the, the most man said lock all the doors sorry take their passport sorry and then um he went he walked out now and our auntie begged him, like, she was like, oh, like, go easy on them, this, this, and that. Then, um... She was like, oh, if, if you're gonna beat her up, you need to beat me up first, mm -hmm. and then you can beat up my daughter. <laughs> and after, our mum was like, oh, we wouldn't even beat you up. Um, she, mum was like, um, who did she say? She, she said, she'll said, grab one she'll leg. grab one leg. My sister will grab one leg. He will just drop on the floor. And we'll beat him up. And everyone else outside the airport will help We'll us. beat him up too because you think he can beat up a little girl. Sorry. As in. <laughs> as in, I will get the last punch. And that's exactly what I did. My mum was like, Tiffany and I are just like, you need to fake cry. You need to be like, I'm so sorry. And when I went out, because we had to go out of the airport, because he went out of the airport into the car park. So when I went out of the airport now, my sister was left in the airport with them dirty, stinking colleagues. No, bruv. And the thing is as well, let me say this, they were like, put the suitcase up there. Fam, the suitcase was heavy. Bruv. They see me struggling and all of them were looking at me like this. <laughs> I was like, cool, your butt is even weird. Put it on now and um, they're chatting the most. They're like, how can you do that? Do you know who he is? Who are you to put your hands? I was like, first of all, it wasn't, it wasn't her. They're like, <laughs> they were like to me, you're the one who came running, who started all of this. I was like, no, I didn't. I saw my mum and him get. I saw him getting onto my mum, so I'm gonna back my mum. What do you mean? So um, they're chatting bears, and I was getting angry. I was like, to the up there, there was some nice guy there. I was like to him, bro, I swear I'm gonna get angry. I was getting so frustrated. I was just like, you know, the ones like, you're moving bears, you're laughing, you're <laughs> yeah. like, they don't want it. And it's like, oh, it's just okay, it's just okay. Um, so I, they were like, um, we're gonna open it. Bro, they got a pen. <laughs> they put the suitcase and they got a pen and they popped the zip open. So you could have did that all this time. All that time, all you, that commotion told you, that you caused. We told you we didn't have the key. You could have just opened it with your pen. So you could have. So I was like to them. So you could have just opened it with your pen. You did all of that for what? And bruv, when they opened it, this is what they did. Say this is the suitcase. Let me make my hand be the suitcase. Close it like this. So it's closed, yeah. Don't watch my nails, guys. They cl it's closed, yeah. They open it like this. Didn't even check properly. Didn't check. So what was, so what, what, what was the, point? the fuss about? You could have just let us go with our luggage, but you wanted to cause problems. Or either way, we told you we couldn't open it. Just open it with the pen, do your little open and close, and, and get go. Us our luggage. 
they were just trying to do the most and then they but they were doing the most like those women were doing the absolute most yeah. they're saying to my mom oh if you don't open the um the luggage we're gonna make you leave and then when you come back you're gonna have to pay to get your stuff back yeah you see what i mean how they're just so discombobbed they just, they, like, they just get this is so yeah. mad because it's my country and i love going there but when stuff like this happens it just pisses me off to the mat and then she said oh um yeah i'm gonna count everything and you're gonna have to say everything that's in your suitcase yeah she's like, i'm gonna count everything one by one, one. Like, you up, have I'll time take, to do that i'll take my suitcase and i'll go shut your mouth bro really they weren't involved deep. and all like four of them came even like after all everything happened they're there saying to my mom oh your your um your daughters they act like they act like men, men. they act like men i don't give a damn oh, i like a man if I'm gonna defend myself, exactly. defend my mom, and defend my sister, don't treat me like a victim and don't, don't treat, treat my family like a well. victim. Yeah, and like, the thing what is, is what this? pissed me off as well, the way he was um, talking to my mom, like he was going like this to her, <sighs> don't you need to open it? Like don't don't put your finger in my mom's face and, and, and he, he was doing it. He, he was he was doing that to me as well. And guys, that's what I'm saying. Like, and the thing is as well, yeah, after I hit him. After I punched him, he tried to lie that he didn't put his hands on me. We, bro, we saw you. There was cameras. And the thing is, everyone that knows me, you know that I do not put my hands on people. I don't get into fights. I don't hit people for no damn reason. The only time I'm going to hit someone is if you've hit me. I'm going to hit you back because I'm not a victim and I know how to fight. Don't hit me and expect me not to hit you back. So when I was, out, when I was outside with him and I was doing my fake taste and whatever, and I said, sorry, and blah, blah, blah. Then he's he had the cheek to even say to me, Oh, do you wanna know the reason why I'm not wearing my uniform? Is because I finished my shift and I was waiting for my colleague. Okay, so if you finish your shift, why are you asking me to open my bag? It doesn't concern me. So you didn't even need to open the bag, like you was doing all this commotion, causing all this trouble because you see two young women that are British and thought that you could take the mick, but no. You wasn't expecting it from Fernando and Caitlin. He really thought that he could treat us like a victim. No, it doesn't run around here. And he was so he was with the quickness to forgive. He was so he was so when fast he wasn't to with forgive. other people. Yeah. When he wasn't with other people, exactly. That's what I when it was just me, him, my mum and my auntie. But when we was in front of all his colleagues, that's when he's saying, I'm gonna beat you up, or we're gonna send them back to London and take their passports. Then you guys came back and because them women were chatting so much and you weren't even a part of the situation i just put my earphones in i was playing candy crush and when i put my earphones in they were like huh why are you ignoring us da, da, da. so um the guy's like oh yeah we can take the luggage so the woman were like yeah but as soon as we got the luggage i was wrong i was like Bye, thank you they were hating and the thing is even when we were walking out of the airport they were still they were, talking you would look back and they'll be like this as well they were still talking anyways Stop thank up. you guys hope you enjoyed this video it was a quick little story time with my sister about what happened when we was in cameroon um be sure to like comment subscribe share this video and i'll see you guys in the next one bye, bye.